Welcoming you to the Tuesday edition of Primetime News. Good evening and many thanks for joining me. I'm Diana Kauta. We commence tonight's bulletin at the courts. The Supreme Court delivered its sentencing in the Shannon vs. Wall murder case. The two co-accused, Azan Madisia and Stephen Muluntu, were convicted of obstruction of the cause of justice. Madisia was sentenced to six years imprisonment, whilst Muluntu was sentenced to four years imprisonment. On to bilateral relations. Executive Director in the Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation, Ambassador Penda Nanda, earlier today opened a bilateral review session on cooperation with Spain. The session covered an array of matters pertaining to the country's cooperation as well as multilateral matters. Let's listen into a portion of the deliberations. Our world is faced with such an array of global challenges threat to international peace and security, climate change, global economic instability, supply chain problems, migration, and so much more. We can however not, we can however only be hopeful that through combined multilateral efforts, we will be able to overcome these challenges and make the world more peaceful. Um, once again, confirm our commitment to keep on joining efforts and working with you to address, as you mentioned, global challenges such as climate change, um, migration, security and peace, the fight against terrorism, and obviously also to face the, um, the important crisis, interlinked crisis that are um, now affecting the, the world, amongst them the very serious one, um, the food crisis caused by the <clears throat> war of aggression in Russia. Switching attention to education matters in the Erongo region, where the Swakop Moon Circuit introduced a central registration venue for pre-primary and grade one school placement for 2024 at the Mondesa Multipurpose Center, which started operating on Monday. Our Erongo regional correspondent Isabel Bendor filed this insert. The new process of having one central registration venue came about through a meeting by the Swakopun Circuit with school principals in an effort to streamline the process. Previously, parents would go directly to the different schools to register their children where they want them enrolled. Education Inspector for the Swakopun Circuit, Tanya Law, in an interview with Nampa on Monday, said the change was prompted by the need to deal with the issue of placement as promptly as possible and to avoid the scramble of the beginning of each year. The circuit is then responsible to work from the records keeping list to ensure that all the learners are placed in Grade 1. There were 625 spaces available for pre-primary and 1,050 for Grade 1 at the town, so schools who already offer pre-primary will continue with those learners to Grade 1 and enroll new learners for the remaining spaces. The inspector has assured parents who do not get a chance to register their children during the two days that placement will continue. Reporting for Primetime News, I'm Michael Madimba. On to matters pertaining to health. The Ministry of Health and Social Services has procured four trucks valued at 10 million Namibian dollars to assist with the delivery of medical supplies nationwide. The Minister of Health and Social Services, Dr. Kalumbi Shangula, at a press conference held during the National Pharmaceutical Services Forum in Oshuarongo on Monday, noted that the trucks belong to the central medical stores and will improve the transportation and distribution of pharmaceutical and clinical supplies across the country. Our reporter Wenji Suvera Kandanga filed this report. The Central Medical Stores is a division within the ministry that plans, stores and distributes pharmaceuticals and clinical supplies for use in all public health facilities in Namibia. The distribution network directly provides pharmaceutical and clinical supplies to about 40 health facilities on a six-weekly cycle. Before the procurement of the four trucks, the fleet of distribution vehicles at Central Medical Stores consisted of only five government-owned trucks with high odometer readings which were prone to frequent breakdowns, often leading to delays in the delivery cycle. The minister during the same event also commissioned 420 wheelchairs, saying the commissioning comes against the backdrop of the commemoration of the National Day of Persons with Disability in Namibia over the weekend. He however emphasized that these will not fully cover the need for wheelchairs in Namibia. 
Shangula called upon all community leaders and health workers to inform the relevant offices of any person with disabilities who need support with mobility. Archers and Jupa Region Governor James Wirika also said they have been receiving assistance from various stakeholders that have donated wheelchairs to the region. Reporting for Primetime News, I'm Michael Madimba. Stay tuned for the business segment. Welcome to Primetime Biz, your source for the latest business and economic news. The Bank of Namibia explained the importance of the amendments that need to be applied to about 14 financial and related bills. This will ensure Namibia complies with relevant international regulations guarding against money laundering and other financial crimes. Let's listen in. The assistance highlighted that we do not have a legal provision or other mechanisms in our legislative framework uh, for the Namibian competent authorities to exchange information indirectly with uh, foreign land counterparts. And that there is no legal basis for supervisors to cooperate with foreign counterparts on anti money laundering and uh, combating of financing of terrorism measures. So in response to the deficiencies identified, uh, we then proposed amendments to our laws so as to meet uh, the deficiencies, or rather to cure the deficiencies identified. And in so doing, we then proposed to introduce um, to introduce uh, a definition of what a terrorist organization is, and this definition is contained on page one of the draft uh, amendment bill. Our next insert focuses on the agro business sector. In an exclusive interview, primetime news anchor Michael Madimba sat down with Israel Mukumbeya, the founder and manager of CDJ Agricultural College based in Khrod Ob, who shared a bit about the college and the agro-business sector at large. We now get to sit with the man behind the magic, the proprietor of CJC Agricultural Training College, Mr. Israel Mukumba. Thank you so much, sir, for having us. Let's get right into it. Could you kindly share with us a bit of, of background on what the project is all about? Do we realize that we were pest setters because most people started practicing the same around within Khrutob. Even up to today, wherever you go, you find most people have started producing chickens for the market. So this is how it is started on the background until we realized, since we are pest setters, the manure of the chickens, we started with the hot culture, with the garden which you are seeing. We had nice produce here of maize crop, um, cabbages, and said that we had a lot of visitors come who were excited of what we were doing. 
And in doing so, we realize we are pace setters. Why should we not establish a training center so that we bring as many people and uh, then we work as a team and start our production? Because if you produce alone, uh, you are not creating any market. But when you teach other people to do the same, then you are, together you create a good market. That's when we happen now to start supplying AMTA and the like. But we are grateful that we develop into a training center that people accepted it. Until today, we can safely tell you that we are accredited by the Namibia Training Authority to train the students whom you have seen on the other side. To view the full documentary about the Agricultural College as well as the Agro Ventures taking place in Croat Ope, catch us next week Wednesday for an insightful edition on Nampa TV's YouTube channel. With that, we have reached the end of our top news segment for tonight. We now shift our attention to the weather focus throughout the country. Welcome to the exhilarating world of Sport Planet. Kylian Babe has told Barry Janjema he will not take up a one-year contract extension according to reports so he could be sold this summer or will be able to leave as a free agent at the end of next season. The 24-year-old signed from Monaco for about 200 million US dollars in 2018, which was a world record fee for a teenager, continues to be linked with a move to Real Madrid. According to reports, France World Cup winner Mbappe left the PSG hierarchy stunned by the decision which was presented in a formal letter and follows on from Lionel Messi announcing his departure to Major League Soccer site Inter Miami. Staying with football but with a South American twist. Chile international midfielder Arturo Fidal on Monday revealed he plans to leave Flamengo when his contract with the Brazilian club expires in December. Vidal, who joined the Rio de Janeiro outfit on a free transfer last July, was a key member of the team that won last year's Copa do Brasil and Copa Libertadores titles. Stay tuned for your sports roundup.
on that note, we have come to the end of tonight's newscast. Many thanks for watching. Do make a date with us again tomorrow as we bring you insights from the local, continental and international arena. From myself, Diana Kauta and the creatives behind the scenes, it's good night.